people, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the video that I have been waiting to do for a really long time. We're finally, finally, we're finally going to be talking about the worst products of 2022, which are the products that I have been trying throughout this year that I have disliked the most, which quality I sincerely question and just products that didn't work out for me. These are not all awful products. These are products that, well, some of them are awful. Some of them are products that just did not work out for me. And we are going to go through all of them and I'm going to let you know which ones I did not love. And if you haven't been here before, please do consider subscribing. I do love makeup and beauty. Usually I like the things that I try. I try to not buy things that I know I won't like. And of course, some of these are PR as well. But if you want to see some more makeup and beauty on your timeline, don't forget to subscribe because I do upload right now every day until Christmas. There's actually quite a lot of things in front of me. I feel like this might be the year where I have the most fails. And I am gonna try to let you know why I don't like some of these things because it's not necessarily because all of these products are absolute trash. It might be that some of these products are maybe not for me or maybe I don't think that they're marketed properly. So the way that they're described is not the way that I think that they work. So I will do my best to describe why I don't like these things. And maybe you'll realize halfway through this video that a couple of these things might work for you because my personal preference, I am soon to be 39 and I don't like things that are super dewy, super sticky. I don't like stuff that is too glittery glowy or like just emphasizes things or are marketed as being like you're gonna see it like under eye powder that I think is just straight up a highlighter. I also don't love non-pigmented eyeshadows. <laughs> I, I don't like stuff that are hard to blend on a skin that's not super smooth. You're, you're gonna you're gonna notice with time here and I also ha do have pretty normal skin. I would say my skin is a little bit more on the combo side here in Texas during summer because I do get a little oily just around my nose. Uh, right now we're in um, like autumn winter of course so I don't really get oily at all and I would say I have more normal skin. So of course some of these things are gonna be based on that. I will link all of these things down in the description box if you do end up thinking that these might be for you. Did film this look for uh, Instagram shorts, TikTok, and that should already be live. And I will leave a link to that in a pinned comment together with what I'm wearing. Okay, let's jump in. Let's start with some lip products. And this is a product that I think was marketed incorrectly. And this is the... <laughs> I love that it says warning icy baby. I I just don't agree with the marketing of this one. This is the Huda Beauty Silk Balm Icy. She did release this one and she also released one that was like spicy or hot or smoky or burning or I, I don't know. It was a red one. Something that was like just meant to be more of a burning sensation. So I love, backstory, I love the Silk Balm from Huda Beauty. I have one in my purse right now. I use it almost every day. I think it is a beautiful product. So when she released this as an icy product, I also love a minty, menthol like cooling lip. I love that. And I think that like the idea of having those two in combination seemed like something amazing. But this is, according to me, a burning lip gloss. They say it's a little minty. It's, they say it's supposed to smell like blue raspberry, but it smells like vinaigrette salad dressing. And I love that, just not, on my, just not on my lips. It's a very peculiar, <laughs> it's a very peculiar <laughs> scent. And I think that this is a lip gloss that hurts my lips. And I don't love that. If you love that, maybe this could be for you. I just don't think that this is a cooling or icy sensation whatsoever. I just don't agree with that at all. All. Another thing that I want to mention, and this is just me being not petty. Th this is not me being petty. This is just me recognizing how this was just not for me. And this is the Michaela and Glam Light, one of the lipsticks that they released. I don't honestly know what this one is called, but it is the light one. And it is so light that this is actually the color of like a concealer. And let me actually grab out um, here. Here we have a concealer that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit that I don't really like at all, nobody's surprised, but this is the concealer shade. And I would say the shade of this concealer is really good. This is the lipstick shade. They are so similar in lightness, and I think you understand why this one doesn't work for me, because for me, this is straight up 
concealer lips or like corrector lips because it is a little bit more peachy this is max myth but just brought back to now and if you love something like that i'm sure you would love this one i don't know what this one is called but it is one of the glam light and michaela lipsticks this one was sent to me in pr i just this color is just incredibly unflattering unless you do a very like ombre lip which i don't do or unless you have a very pale skin tone which i also don't have or if you love a very pale lip i know some people love that i wore that in a video this lipstick and i was like boop that's too much and some people loved it it's not for me though and i'm just letting you know that if you were looking for super super pale lipstick with a peach undertone this might be for you it most definitely was not for me then we have and so many people love this but i do not this is those shake lipsticks i think these are called you know the ones from urban decay oh, they're called like the vice lip something you're supposed to shake them shaky shaky and then like they are a glossy lip color that is like a liquid lipstick but glossy but it still doesn't transfer and i think the idea of this there i know there's a bunch of different products like this on the market and so many people love this the reason why i don't love this is because i feel like it's very heavy on the lips i feel it on my lips i feel like i have like a, a film or a mask on my lips and i just if i want to have something glossy i don't for me feel like it's that much of a problem if i have to reapply i don't feel like it's that much of a problem if a little of it comes on my, off of my coffee cup i don't think that's a problem but i think that this one is uncomfortable because i feel like it's heavy on the lips and it's sticky on the lips and i just i didn't like the feeling of it it feels like a very heavy sticky satin lipstick and i didn't think that the benefits of that product overweighs the 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 faults of it i just didn't like how it felt on my lips so it's not for me i know some people love it though and it works it really does but i don't love it here is the <laughs> i talked about this so much this is again just a, a, a color thing this is the jacqueline cosmetics liquid lipstick in sugared it's this color but more on the peachy side and a little bit more white based it is very hard to wear very hard to wear and i will also say i don't think that this liquid lipstick is the same formula as jacqueline cosmetics usually has on liquid lipsticks because this one becomes incredibly dry almost to the point where it's like crackling and crumbling and it just looks very very awful on the lips and that combined with it being a white based neon corally peach just makes this a color where i'm like why did we release this is anyone out here loving this color? I just thought that that color was a very weird color and I wish that it wouldn't have been so white based because if it hadn't been that and also good quality, it could have been a really nice coral lip, but now it just looks like 80s gone bad. Oh my God. These, all of these things are getting decluttered by the way. All of these things are getting decluttered, but these are getting thrown in the bin. The Few things get me so annoyed as these lip liners because i've found out even more things about these lip liners since last i talked about them these are the hot liners by Kosas. these are a train wreck an absolute train wreck these are the lip liners that Kosas released i'm not going to smell them this time because they smell rancid they've gone bad and i bought these at launch at sephora and one of them came already bad like it had already turned it is rancid the other one the reddish one it turned a little while later. It is dry. They are crumbly. They have just gone bad. Something about this formula, the longevity is like nothing. It says that it's have, it has a 12 months shelf life, but I'm guessing it's more like 12 minutes. The thing that enrages me with this product is that it's already discontinued. The brand sneakingly just discontinued this, just brushed it off the shelves, took it off Sephora, took it off the retailers. It's no longer available. The brand knows that this is a trash product and they just discontinued it. And here I am sitting with two lip liners that I, I mean, I could have returned them. I could have returned them, but maybe, maybe you're like me. Maybe you got a product that went bad in two months and maybe the like return window is gone. And you realize the brand discontinued them. They never offered anything to you for offering you to purchase a product that they themselves realized within less than six months, this is a faulty product. It honestly enrages me and it makes me question. And we're going to talk about that in another product, product as well. This 
some of the things that I have tried this year makes me question, does brand really test our products? Is, is testing products or quality or longevity, is that even a part of makeup development anymore? Or are we just like, oh, that's good enough, let's release it. Because this feels rushed. This feels rushed. I, there are labs, and I know this from working with food safety, there are labs where you can send products and they will do a longevity testing on them. Basically, they will let you know how long is this product gonna keep itself fresh? How long does it gonna, is it gonna take before this product goes rancid? And I'm wondering if maybe we skipped a couple of steps here. Let's quickly talk about this one as well. This is the, I, I literally have saved this in my collection just for this video. This is the 90s roller gloss and this is from City Color. This smells wonderful, but the product is, now it starts rolling, but when I got this product, it wasn't rolling at all. And honestly, like not a lot of, well, you can see, not a lot of product comes off. Um, can you see, there, there's a little moistness going on there. It smells nice, but I think you can see in the bubble, you can see. This is too thick of a formula to have in the roller gloss. Again, this is a very affordable product, but I think that I understand that you wanted this 90s collection to be in one of those roller things, but like, just put a formula that works in that packaging, because this was ridiculous. And for the longest time, I couldn't even like roll the ball, like it was stuck, like nothing came out. It was just like, they might have just have put like a keychain or something on it and like called it decoration. Let's talk about the concealer then. This is the concealer of Doom. This is the concealer that I have here. This is from Jacqueline Cosmetics and this is the, I don't even know, it's called Perfecting Concealer, which is bold. <laughs> no, knowing what I know about this concealer, this is plaster. Like I could fix my bathroom with this one. It dries down like cement. It has the blendability of just, I don't know, like Tippex. Like you would literally have maximum of 30 seconds to make anything work with this and then it's gonna dry down so don't think that you are gonna be painting those triangles and doing imagine oh my god that is that is the tiktok challenge i want to see someone do i want to see someone try and do this like you know they do the dots on the entire face and then blend it out try doing this with this concealer you're gonna be have to be dotting for your life because you have 30 seconds blank to get this blended out and then it's set for forever. You don't need any powder because like I said, it sets down like cement. This is extremely unflattering under the eyes. It looks very dry, very cakey and very heavy. I use this for cut creases and like for swatches. It's really good for that um, because it doesn't budge, but under my eyes, as I said, I'm about to turn 39. I don't need any plaster under my eyes like I, I barely need anything under my eyes. Anything too heavy is gonna make my under eyes go from 39 to 89. And this one, it ain't really helping. Let me tell you that. There was another concealer that I really didn't like this year. And I just brought this here because I this is the concealer from uh, Sara. This also looks very heavy under the eyes. And this one is a little bit more on the creamy side. Uh, but it's almost like a little creamy heavy. It looks almost creamy glossy and it just looks a little heavy under the eyes. It's not a super flattering concealer. If you have very dry under eyes, may... I didn't like this one. There are so many better concealers. And here's the thing that I don't like about Sora. They are not available in stores. So having to like guess your foundation shade online and also like the whole way of shopping. I, listen, I am one of the few people that actually love how Sara is showing fashion. You know, people make fun of them like showing fashion in such a weird way. I love that. But when it comes to makeup, if you're not able to swatch the stuff in store, you're gonna have to be a little bit more clear about what I'm actually buying. And it is very hard to interpret the Sara website when it comes to makeup. If you thought buying fashion was hard on the Sara website, try buying makeup on the Sara website. This wasn't a really good formula. Also the description of the shade, it's not horrible, but I just, I think this Sara makeup needs a little help. And I don't think that what the website is offering right now is really doing that for them. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I've mentioned this before. I find this so funny. I don't think that this is the reason why, but this is the last thing that I got in PR from Rare Beauty and I really don't like it. 
<laughs> I don't think that they kicked me off the PR list because of that. And even if they did, I, I'm not offended. I think that you should send PR to people like that really, really love everything that the brand does. I think that this positive light tinted moisturizer, brown spectrum, blah, 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 blah. I think that it is, is an extremely greasy mess. I don't mind something that has a little glow to it. Like I said, again, I don't like something that's too sticky, too glowy, too oily. I don't love that. But this is a very glowy, low coverage, thing that I think that this this doesn't wear good. I don't think it wears gracefully. It really becomes so greasy that it just emphasizes every pore, every fine line, everything on my face. And especially during summer when I like wearing something low coverage, if I'm going to wear this in the Texas heat with the humidity that is like through the roof, I'm going to look like I took a bath in lard. Like, it's not going to work out for me. So I didn't love this one at all, but I've heard people that have very dry skin loving this one. But I just thought that this was a greasy mess. The time that I have spent talking about how I don't love the Pacifica uh, Sun Dreams bronze, I think we can just speed through this a little bit. This dried up. Mine dried up within a week. Uh, I don't care if it's affordable. I don't care if you have a good shade range. I don't care if you're sold at the drugstore. If it is like a one-time use product. What's the point of this one? It dried up. It is unusable. It's just a weird product. And again, this goes back to the whole Kosas liner thing. Were there no product testing on this one? Because I feel like if you gave this to 20 different people and let them test this for a month, I am sure that most of them would come back to you and tell you, actually, this dried up. There's something about this formula. It doesn't stay creamy. It dries up. It, in it almost becomes gritty, sandy. When I touch this one now, it's like it's like, it's like dried up mud, a little gritty. Th this is just a bust. This is just a bad a bad product, a bad formulation, I don't understand at all. This product I'm gonna mention, not necessarily because it's like an awful product, but this is just, I have so many better things that I can recommend that is at this price range. Uh, if you were looking for like a cream product, like a bronzer, highlighter thing. This just isn't the one that I would recommend. There's really nothing wrong with the highlighter. I think the highlighter is decent. Uh, I feel like that one is better than the, the contour. I feel like the contour is a little tricky to blend out. It is a little tuggy to blend out. Not to the part where it's impossible, but definitely not to the point where I would be like, oh yeah, this is a good product. This is the one that I would recommend to you from the drugstore. No, this is in okay, it's a decent product, but I think there are so many better products at the drugstore at this price point that I would recommend to you over this one. And also I'm a little bit disappointed because I feel like NYX overall gets complexion products really good. Like they make incredible foundations and concealers. This one, I just, I thought it was like meh. I was just a little bit disappointed because I, I just didn't think that that was an amazing product. Okay, oh wait, I, let me talk about a high-end uh, foundation as well. We skipped this one. This is probably the worst foundation I've tried in my entire life. And every time I hear someone talk about this in a positive way, I am questioning if I'm living in an alternate universe. And this is the Patrick Ta uh, foundation and powder uh, combo. I hate this one. Like I said, I have pretty normal skin. If I go outside when it's very humid and warm, I'll get a little oily around my nose. If I stay inside in the AC, I don't really have any problems with that. This one broke up on me, like broke up on me. It started to form like little sci-fi-esque clusters of goop on my skin within like five hours. And I looked so greasy and so like just filthy within just like five hours that I was like, what is, what's going on? Like, well, what, what's happening here? I don't understand this product at all. I do not have finicky skin. Most foundations look pretty okay on me. Like this one, for example, it's not that this one was breaking up on me. It's not that this one was like, oh, I don't understand who this is for. It's just that it's not for me. And I'm letting you know as well that if you do not like a super glowy face, it's probably not for you either. But this one just broke up on me and looked horrible. And this is not an affordable foundation. 
with a gripping primer, I can make this one not break up on me. It still looks glorious, all glowiness, like I'm actually radiant, like I am about to get a supporting role in the Twilight movie, like I am glowy. That's where I'm at with this one. So I can make it not break up on me with a gripping primer. But I don't think that you should make a foundation not look like you're about to turn into a zombie. I don't think that you should need an additional product for that. That could just be me though. I don't like this foundation at all. At all. I think it is a really bad product and I am very excited to not have that in my collection anymore. I will say though that usually uh, at the end of every vlogmas I try to do a, like a full face of all my worst makeup of the year. So I am gonna be showing you this one one more time. I, I think it's all fun and games. I try to do a full face of makeup that I, the, like the worst makeup of the year, giving them a second chance, just trying to make them work. So I will definitely be doing that as well. And um, so stay tuned, that is coming. And I will give that, I will show that foundation one more time, but I will definitely be using it with the gripping primer because it is an absolute no go if I don't. Here are two blushes that I didn't like. These were like recently, I didn't like any of these. This is the Balm Blush, Cheek Freak Blush Balm from About Face. I feel like this is, again, it is a balm, so it's fairly balmy and like, dare I say, glowy, greasy, a little, just lifts your foundation a little bit on the cheeks. And there's a lot of effort that goes into this product for very little pigmentation, at least with this one. This is in Ranchi. I just didn't think that this was worth the hassle for just leaving my cheeks almost not flushed at all but very glowy and kind of sticky it's more like putting a almost sheared lip gloss on your cheeks i just didn't love that i also didn't love the about face this is the af94 this is the drugstore sister brand that they have at walmart and this one is in savor and this is a terracotta orange like almost like this color is a perfection when it comes to color but this one again it just leaves my cheeks a little sticky it just looks a little bit too glowy and there's not enough pigmentation and this one lifts it lifts everything foundation primer tan everything is gone so i don't love that there's also a bra at the bronzer duo from the uh, high end like from sephora that I didn't love this year and this is from one size and this is the made for shade bronze and sculpting trio i parts of me kind of understand and a little bit admire the idea of doing three different shades this is the medium one but they're not different enough i think to warrant having three of them in one i think they should have just gone with a duo or maybe one that's like cooler one that's warmer and one that's a cream because they are fairly similar i think you can see that this one is cooler and this one is more yellow but then this one in the middle is just i don't think that all of this was needed and i'm just that's me don't hate the idea of it, but the reason why I don't love it is that I feel like this product is too pigmented. This is intensely pigmented to the point where it feels almost like eyeshadow instead of bronzer. And it also is one of those formulas that where you put your brush down, if you are having a little bit too much product on the brush where you put it down, you're gonna have a little blotch there and it's gonna take a lot of effort for you to blend that out. So I just feel like it is a little tricky and a little too pigmented formula to be a great product. I just, it's not my favorite from the brand. They have other things I like, not this one. I've gone on and on about this one, so I'm gonna just quickly mention this is the Revolution Bright Lights Highlighter uh, in gold lights. Some people say that this is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury spotlight. It is definitely not. This formula is, according to me, a glittery, patchy, unflattering mess. And I don't understand anyone who thinks that this formula is even resembling, not, not like, not only not resembling Charlotte Tilbury's formula, but like resembling a good formula. When I see people recommend this one, I'm starting to think that that that's where I see what, what's wrong with the world. I just really despise that formula. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. This is the under eye powder that I was talking about. And this is the, this is from Sigma. And I usually really love the things from Sigma. I love their loose powder. I'm even wearing it today. This is the 
a soft focus setting powder. I'm wearing this one today. It's a beautiful product. I think it's wonderful. But they released this one that's called the Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder in Fairy Dust. And they marketed this one as a powder to give glow to your skin all over and also to brighten up your under eyes. And I cannot emphasize you can see, I cannot emphasize enough how much this is more of a loose highlighter. I would not recommend this to anyone's under eyes. Like, honestly, this is, this is not even a glowy finishing powder. This is a highlighter. And I wish that they would have put this in smaller containers in three different colors and just marketed it as a highlighter because that is what this is. I'm just telling it as it is. Okay, let's work our way into some eye products because I have a couple of things that I want to mention that I don't necessarily think were maybe <laughs> the best decision of this year. The first one is actually from One Size as well, and this is the One Size Eye Popper in Matte. This one is in Battle Ready, and this was like described as an easy, smoky eye, and I was also hoping that I was going to be able to use this as like a eye primer, like s some kind of a base. This one blends amazingly on the back of your hand uh, or on skin that's firm and doesn't move around a lot. But on my eyes, because like my, my lids are a little hooded here because like, like with age, everything kind of droops, you know, mm -hmm. love that for me. This one is really hard to blend on skin that's moving and it dries down fairly quickly and it dries down extremely matte. So it is not really suitable to be putting any other sh eyeshadow on top of it because it dries down extremely matte. And also because it is really hard to blend on skin that's moving, it just ends up looking like a somewhat bad blended beige. And it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't need a dedicated product for that. That's like my worst nightmare. So for me, this is this is a no. I also wasn't very impressed with the Scooby-Doo mascara from Glamlight. This one was sent to me as PR and I love the packaging of it, but I think that this mascara is neither elongating or volumizing and I need a mascara to at least be one of those two things. I prefer an elongating mascara, but if it's neither of those two things, I prefer a smaller brush so I can use it on my lower lash line, but it doesn't have that either. So I think that this is a really cool concept in an amazing packaging which is part of a collection that as a whole is really really beautiful like the palettes from that collection you're definitely going to be seeing that in the best of 2022 that's coming tomorrow absolutely stunning this mascara though i don't think that they really had a home run with that one something else that i just really don't think is a good product and this is the glitter pill from half magic beauty i really enjoyed the product from half magic beauty i've had a lot of fun with them this one is very watery and i don't know if you can see that it kind of can you see that this is wait let me see i think that you can see how we're going youtuber 2015 here but i think you can see that this is just very liquidy and you can see that the glitter is just moving around in the water and you can see it's not fully dispensed either in the formula and what i think with this formula is that i think that like you have to like really shake to get the glitter to like mix with the water but and then there is like a silicone applicator but since this is such a watery formula nothing comes off on the applicator and you end up like just putting water on your eyes and no glitter so it is just a very weird formulation because like if this had truly been a glitter liner that would have been amazing but it's just very do you see there's a little glitter here but you cannot do any glitter liner with this you have to put on 500 layers of this to get some glitter on your eyes and then you have just put on five layers of water on your eyes as well so you've probably ruined whatever you had underneath so i just think that this is a bad formulation i just don't really understand this one it's such a shame because the other things from half magic beauty has been really good the next thing is the liners from colourpop the graphics ink liners and i understand why colourpop would want to release another eyeliner formula uh, besides the bff liquid liners because those are felt tip liner but i think that what they should have done instead of doing this dip liners uh because this is also felt tip liners is to do like brush tip liners because these are some of these are great some of these are horrible so this is just a very inconsistent formula some of these are extremely sheer to and, and patch it to the point where you have to do like three layers to get it to look even remotely okay 
and who wants to do three layers of a liner and some of them are like dry like to the point where it's like almost impossible to be precise with them this is just a very inconsistent formula and i don't really understand why they released these and i will say had i not been sent this entire range in pr i maybe would not have recognized how inconsistent they are because now i had the opportunity of course to try all of them and that's sometimes the perks of getting stuff in pr that you're able to see if something is consistent over all of the different uh, shades. This is the thing from House Labs that I didn't like. I did try, I think, all of the things from House Labs this year. And this is the House Labs, the, the just the liquid paints. They're called high power pigment paint. And I don't think that these are high power pigment. I think that these are kind of weak in pigment. They also dry down very matte. I don't think that these are pigmented enough to be worn alone. And I don't think that they are easy enough to work with so that you can use them as a primer. And since they're not, according to me, pigmented enough to be used alone, you can't really like use them as a cut crease either because they're not going to completely cover what's underneath. I just kind of wish that these were more pigmented. I don't hate the formula to work with, but they're just a little sheer. And I don't love that in like a liquid eyeshadow. I don't love sheer in any kind of eyeshadow. <laughs> we're going to get to that. The next thing I want to mention, and this is just a lackluster product. This is the NYX Glow Shots. It says Ultimate Glow Shots, which I think is a very peculiar name to choose for something that's just kind of... It's just a shimmery eyeshadow. It, I mean, it's not, it's not ugly. This is really pretty. But is this warranted having in... A, a like something like this because when you put this on your eyes and you blend it out it just looks like you put either highlighter or a shimmer shadow on your eyes there's nothing about this there are no there's no extra effect there's no extra sparkle there's no glitter there's no wow factor there's nothing about this formula that warrants you to get this as a liquid because i feel like sometimes working with a liquid working with a cream especially when it comes to eyeshadows and this is what I feel the same about this one. It's a little bit more tricky. So I would want some kind of a return on the investment that I'm putting into working with something that's a little bit more tricky. And neither of these are bringing that. This just looks like a mediocre matte eyeshadow that's not even pigmented. And this just looks like a regular shimmer eyeshadow. And that's how you have to see this. You bought a gold single. You bought a single shadow, but in liquid form. And it's just not exciting enough to warrant being uh, in this. Because now you see that it, it it dried down now. Can you see? When the wetness has gone away, it's just, just a little shimmer. You can get this from any kind of shimmer eyeshadows. There's nothing special about it. So I just feel like you're paying a little much for just a gold single. That's just how I see it. This is one of the first palettes that I tried this year, and this has been a disappointment for me. And this is the uh, ColourPop All Amethyst Palette. I really like the ColourPop formula. There is a lot of ColourPop palettes that I've really enjoyed this year. This one isn't one of them. I bought mine at Ulta, and I like the color story. There are some cool tones. There's a couple of like a little bit more unexpected, like bright, almost blue, purple duochromes down here. This is a beautiful color story, but this formula isn't ColourPop's best. And when I work with this one, I kind of felt like it's a little bit off. And it's really hard to swatch some of these shades because they're extremely hard pressed. So I think, because I've seen some other people live swatch this palette, and their palette swatches amazingly. Beautiful. Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't swatch like that, so I think there's some inconsistencies with this palette. And I've also seen that in the comments when I've talked about this palette throughout the year. Some people love theirs, and they're like, mine is amazing. Some people have gotten the same kind of half ass quality as me, and they don't like it at all. So I think that with this palette, and maybe with some other palettes too, they're having problems with inconsistency, because, I mean, ColourPop has their own factory. They do produce their own makeup. Most brands do not have their own factory, and they're sharing factories with other brands, even though they have their own form less but I think that they had some problems with inconsistency with this one because I didn't like that one at all I just didn't think that this is the color pop quality that I know and actually love I also really did not like this one and oh my god there was someone that was really upset with me that I didn't like like really cussing me out because I was like stupid for not understanding that this was actually good for the price but I don't think that this 
welcome to Miami from Essence is good for the price. I don't think that, th I'm sorry. This is, I think this is $10. I don't think it's worth that. I think this is a very mediocre palette and I understand the $10, I mean, for $10, you can get a ColourPop quad. And I understand that's only four shadows, but that's four great shadows. Here you're getting, what is it, 612, kind of mediocre eyeshadows. These are not great eyeshadows. They are very sheer. Like, this is the dark purple. This is the dark purple. They're sheer. And the shimmers are not very exciting or interesting. They're just not... Um, a really good formula. I didn't like this formula at all. I thought it was sheer. I thought it was a little hard to like build. So if something is sheer, as long as I can build on it so I can make it really impactful and make it fun, that's totally fine. But I just didn't think that this was really good. And this is the shimmer when I blend it out. I think the shimmers are, I mean, okay, but I just didn't love the mattes at all. I mean, this is the purple matte. This is the purple matte. Come on, that is not good for the price. That is not good for the price. And this is the turquoise one. That's a little better, but still, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think that this is good for the price. I think that this is a fairly mediocre eyeshadow palette that thank God is only $10 because when you buy it, you at least only like, wasted $10 on it. I don't think that it is either pigmented, buildable, or extremely blendable. I think it is fairly mediocre, and if you were looking for a drugstore palette, this isn't what I would recommend. And even if you are getting 12 colors for $10, why would you get 12 mediocre colors for $10 when you can get 9 great for $15, or 4 amazing for $10, or Givious Place released that new 9 pan palette for $10. I mean, I'm just saying that sometimes more isn't better, and I just don't think that that was a good quality. Now let's end this video by talking about the Huda Beauty Color Block Quads that they released. Whew, I want to say for summer? These were pretty meh. And I, I, I've said this before, I feel sad when I see stuff like this being released at Sephora because I think that some people are gonna try these and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, purples are so hard to make. Not even like a high-end brand at, at Sephora can get them right. No, there are brands out there, there are making good purples. There are making good blue eyeshadows. Huda just isn't one of them. And I feel like it just gives a bad rep to colorful eyeshadows to the mainstream market when this is the only colorful eyeshadow that's been available in stores for like ma the mainstream public. These just weren't very good. These just weren't very good. They were pretty mediocre and they're not even that affordable. And I'm just like, the best part of this is, is the idea of them, the, the packaging of them, but the quality was just like meh. I could make them work but it took a little effort. And with that being said, I do work with very colorful eyeshadows several times a week. So I kind of know what I'm doing. But if you were to pick these up as your first colorful eyeshadow, you would probably be fairly disappointed. And I would hate to see that. I just wish that mainstream brands would put as much effort into their colorful options as they do with their neutral options. And yeah, that was the video. Those were the products that I have tried throughout the year that I thought were either bad quality or just not fit for me or stuff that I shopped was just mediocre and you could definitely find something better for a similar price point. Let me know which ones were your absolute busts of this year and please don't cuss me out because I don't like Essence Welcome to Miami palette. You're okay to love it. If you bought some of these products and you love them, that's great news. That means that you spent your money on something that you love and I did not. So that is bad news for me and good news for you. It is okay to disagree about makeup. It is not that deep. Let's be honest. And yeah, stay tuned for tomorrow because I'm doing my best of 2022 for tomorrow. And I'm so excited to be letting you know about all the things that I've been trying that I've been loving as well. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow.